Uh, we have G star as the union of T, so this is a subgraph of G. Um, and then, so what do, what do we do? So uh, here's G. Uh, star it's formed by T um, then we had uh, we covered almost all of uh, we showed that G delete G star was typical and covered um, and that so then the nibble implies that we can cover almost all of uh, G delete G star by some other set of edges tri triangles M um, and then I ended last time by uh, talking about the, this uh, subgraph uh, L. So it's um, I've drawn it as a little corner here, but you should think of it as actually a a, a low degree subgraph, which is uh, uh, so this is a yeah this this the, the fact that it occupies a small picture, part of the picture here is is not in, intended to suggest that it covers few vertices, but rather that it has low degree. So so. Um, L is uh, C1 bounded. So uh, max degree of L is less than uh, C1 times N, whereas C1 is maybe uh, C to the quarter. OK. Um, so uh, the next uh, step is to, uh, to cover uh, L by uh, some. Uh, by some triangles, um, which are going to uh, spill over into uh, G star. So, uh, um, so cover. Um, so, um, so we're going to apply a, a, a random greedy algorithm. Um, Uh, so choosing triangles uh, one by one, uh, randomly. Uh, so actually, um, just as, as an aside, so I, I said that this, this set of triangles N was could be constructed by the nibble. It could also be constructed by a random greedy algorithm, just choosing them one by one. This is harder to analyze, but uh, uh, results in, uh, recent results show that this would work just as well. Um, so... Uh, I didn't. I didn't tell you uh, any details of it. Um, I, I just said it can be done. So, uh, so one one method which would work would be to uh, uh, apply the the random triangle removal in the in the in the, the way I mentioned in the first lecture. So, pick a, a uniformly random triangle, delete its edges. Pick a uniformly random triangle, what remains, pick its edges, and so on. So this is so uh, triangle removal process in some subgraph. Um, so uh, for a long time, people didn't know how to analyze this kind of process, but there are so recent results. So uh, uh, many names, I'm not going to go through through them. But there's, uh, so this uh, such a process would uh, would you can show it with high probability uh, to, uh, does uh, produces uh, a set of edge tri triangles such that the uh, subgraph, which is not covered L, has this property of being. Uh, That's fine. I, all, all I all I care about L is that it's that it has this boundedness property. Actually, yes, it is typical, but it's a, uh, I don't I don't need that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to apply a random greedy algorithm, uh, but this is going to be an easier one because uh, I'm not trying to cover all, almost everything. I, there's a lot of a lot of room here. I've got this small set of edges here, and I've got a large set of edges here which I can use to cover it. So th this will be much easier to analyze. Um, okay, so let's 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 state what the algorithm is. So uh, so we uh, so so order uh, L as uh, um, I so I and T. Okay, so T is the size of L, and I'm going to go through the edges one by one and choose choose a triangle. Uh, so 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 construct. Uh, MC, so this is the set of edges joint triangles that's going to uh, cover L um, as, uh, so say, TI, uh, INT, uh, where 
TI is a triangle um, using uh, EI and two edges of G star uh, chosen uh, randomly um, subject to not using any edge that we've previously used. Uh, 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 no previously used edge. Okay, so this is the, uh, uh, the randomized algorithm for constructing MC. And, and then, so then we get this spill. So this is uh, M C. We get the spill S. So if S be union of M C intersect G star. Uh, and then, what do we want to prove about this lemma? So uh, with high probability, the algorithm. Uh, I should say, if there's no such triangle, then the algorithm has to abort. So. Uh, uh, so, or, or it's a board. Um, so with high probability algorithm does not abort. And S is uh, C2 bounded uh, for some C2. C2. We'll, we'll calculate C, C2 as um, when we see the proof. Okay, um, so, okay, proof. Well, what's was the idea of the proof? So the, uh, the idea is that if, if we chose these triangles uniformly at random without worrying about this, con this condition, then this, this would be fairly easy to, uh, to prove. And uh, if we maintain the property that, that the edges we've covered is bounded, then uh, we don't change the distribution that much. So, idea. Uh, so this is easy if uh, triangles uh, don't have to avoid previous ones. Uh, and if S is uh, bounded, then avoiding is uh, gives a, about the same distribution. So that's the, uh, that's the idea. So let's uh, formalize this. Um, so, uh, proof. Uh, so let's Let's have some notation for the uh, the edges that we've covered so far. So uh, so right uh, uh, S sub i to, for the uh, intersection at, sorry, union over j less than i t j intersect g star. This is what we covered so far, um, and, we, and we have to avoid this. So we're going to try and uh, uh, keep this bounded. So uh, so let uh, so bi be the bad event. Uh, that uh, si is not c2 bounded. Um, and let's uh, uh, consider the first time at which uh, this event holds, or uh, infinity if, if, if it doesn't. So let uh, tau be. Uh, the least i such that the i holds, um, or infinity of no such. Okay. Um, so we want to prove that uh, tau is infinity with high probability. So, so we want 
high probability tau is equal to infinity. Um, so let's uh, let's fix some uh, t zero, zero and, and and estimate the probability that tau is equal to t zero. Okay. So. Um, for any i less than t t zero, we know that uh, that b i does not hold. Uh, b i does not hold. Okay, so we're okay uh, so far. S i is bounded. Um, so so let's see. So uh, we want to know how many. Uh, let's see how many choices of. Uh, of triangle forbidden. So, so we consider, uh, so, so EI is in, uh, so one, one plus or minus six uh, C DG star squared N uh, uh, valid triangles uh, by typicality. Uh, G star because uh, What's that? Yeah, typicality of, of G star. Yeah. Uh, I'm using typicality of G star, which is a which is contained in this joint typicality condition, which I I I mentioned last time. Um, okay. Um, how many of these are forbidden? Uh, we can just crudely estimate this using the maximum degree. Uh, so um, so the number. Forbidden triangles is less than twice the maximum degree, which is uh, uh, two C one n, um, and you remember so C one is uh, C to the quarter. C is some large power of d. Maybe I think I said three thousand. So so this is much smaller than uh, uh, this. So let's say just crudely, it's less than half the total. Okay, um, so okay, so then, so now I I, I can compare. Um, so the uh, let's let's see what do I what do I want to do next? Okay, well, let's, um, let's 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 remember this and then think what we want to do now. So um, so now we want to uh, uh, look at the fix some particular edge and, and ask what's the probability that we cover it. Um, at a given step, so it's uh, which, which we want to prove some boundedness assumption. It helps say what's the probability we cover some particular edge, and then we, we can sum that over all edges incident to a vertex. So if we uh, um, so we fix uh, so now um, so now we'll uh, fix um, any e and g star uh, and estimate um, well let's let I want to estimate a sum of uh, uh, conditional probabilities so at each each step the probability uh, that I cover e so sum over i. Let's give some notation for it. So, uh, call this call this one re. So that estimate sum o, sum over uh, i less than t zero. Uh, all right, all right. Probability prime. Uh, explain it in a second. So the e is contained in t i. So so um, so this by this I mean the conditional probability. So given uh, choices so far, okay. um, so uh, I can uh, I can bound this by uh, 
the uh, just uh, the prob twice the pro uh, the probability that a uh, uniformly random triangle contains e. Uh, where uh, TI prime is uh, uniform, uh, so is, is a random valid triangle, let's say. Okay, so, uh, so you remember I, I, I said it, but the idea at the beginning of the proof was if I just chose the tri triangles randomly without worrying about avoiding previous ones, it would be easy. So this is what I'm considering now. I'm, I'm imagining that TI prime that I just choose, choose a triangle randomly and don't worry about avoiding the others. Uh, so this hole is just because I've forbidden uh, less, than, less than half of the triangles uh, by previous edges. Uh, uh, and what is, what is this probability? So the probability that uh, E is contained in Ti prime is equal to uh, so zero if, uh, if E and uh, E i are are disjoint. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, one over the number of edges uh, on the number of triangles containing um, EI, which by number of valid triangles containing EI, which by typicality is one over. Uh, otherwise, okay. Um, so, all right. We're Getting there. So how are, we, how are we going to estimate this? So we need to know how many terms uh, contribute something non-zero. Um, well, this is just coming from the uh, the boundedness of L. Um, so so the number of uh, non-zero terms is less than uh, 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 2C1N uh, by Oh, you know what? This this C one should have been a C two um, because this this is boundedness of S. Of S I. Um, this is a C one because I'm using boundedness of L. Okay. Uh, all right. So. So what do I conclude? So uh, um, RE is uh, uh, so what, uh, what do I get? So uh, uh, 2 times 2C1N divided by 1 plus or minus C and so the ends cancel. Uh, I've got some, uh, uh, I have an estimate for this R sub B, which is uh, C1 divided by some, some constant involving the density, as, uh, which happens to be this, the square of the density. But uh, you should think of RE as being basically C1. Well, actually, RE is going to be basically C2. OK, so, um, so what do I do now? I just have to sub, sum this. I fix a vertex, and I sum this uh, overall. Uh, edges in, at that vertex. So, uh, so, um, so now, so, uh, so fix V and sum uh, R E over all. E containing T, uh, uh, so we get uh, so, uh, so sum again. Uh, less than. Um, and let's let's call this uh, maybe uh, C two over two n, where C two is whatever I get 
from from there. So maybe uh, uh, maybe ten c one d j bar to the minus two. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, if if this was uh, uh, if these were independent, then I would just say by chain of bounds uh, uh, with high probability, I have a bound of c two n. Um, and this this works anyway by, uh, for instance, by uh, by Martingale methods, which I, I won't I won't go into. You can you can say that well because I I'm only ch I'm o each time I'm choosing a triangle, it's only making a, a very small effect that uh, I can apply I can I can also get that bound with high probability. So I'll say uh, so by a concentration inequality. Uh, with high probability, uh, it's uh, uh, so the, uh, the degree of v in, in uh, t zero st zero is less than c two n rule v. Okay, uh, so what does this mean? This uh, uh, means that uh, uh, with high probability, tau is not uh, t zero. With high probability, tau is not equal to t zero. Rule t is less than t. Uh, so, let me hold. Now, I want to, I'm going to have a number of random greedy algorithms. I want to sort of just. Uh, have a recap of the proof and sort of, um, see what the general principles are that we can generalize to other situations. So, because uh, I'll, uh, I'll in future random greedy algorithms, I'll say this is like the, that that proof. So, so, so general uh, principles for the random greedy algorithm. So, um, so we. Uh, First of all, we decide what boundedness condition we're trying to prove. So, so decide uh, what boundedness we are trying to prove. Um, and then assume this has not yet failed and show, uh, show that, that the uh, most half of the uh, choices of configuration are Forbidden. Assuming this has not failed, uh, less than half of the total choices forbidden. Um, then, then what? So now we uh, we we have this uh, sum of conditional probabilities. But uh, we said actually, let's just think of unif forget about conditional probabilities. Just think of uniformly random configurations. So, so estimate. Um, let me call it have a new thing. So, for so for all e and g star. Um, so e, which is the uh, so the expected. Number of times cover E with uniformly random uh, independent choices. Okay, so uh, forget about the, that it's that it's uh, that you're avoiding things and just imagine everything is uniformly random. Calculate the expected number of times you cover this edge, uh, and then so um, so if uh, if e is, e is less than b over 2 uh, with high probability uh, uh, the covered edges. So, so the covered graph is, uh, is b-bounded. So, uh, 
So this is the, the general scheme. And uh, but sometimes it will be more general than this, but this is a, uh, a typical situation. Um, uh, what, what else? So it, we're, we're going to be working with graphs which, which are not triangles, so we need to be able to count those. So let's, uh, let's see how many of those there are. So we're going to need uh, to count other graphs. So, uh, so here's the kind of situation. We'll have some graph H uh, if we're interested in embedding in, in G star. So H is small. Uh, and we'll actually, we'll have already embedded part of H. So there'll be some F where we've got some embedding. Uh, and then we'll be... Uh, we we'll, we'll want to count the number of extensions. So, uh, um, so maybe we'll have. So maybe we'll write. Uh, so if if e is the extension specified by phi f and h, we'll have uh, x e of g star is the number of phi. Um, embedding of h in, in g star such that uh, so a number of phi star uh, such that phi star restricts to phi on f. Okay, so this is the, the general kind of setup which we'll be interested in. So, uh, uh, and so this is uh, uh, this is where we're going to use the uh, typicality not just for uh, that we know the degrees of vertices and pairs, but actually we know the degrees of triples and so on. Because uh, you can think about uh, counting these Im embeddings vertex by vertex. Uh, if there's just one new vertex here, then, then the number of choices is just density to the number of uh, neighbors in what, what I have already uh, times n, and then you iterate that. So, um, so if... Uh, um, if... Uh, VH has one vertex outside of F um, and um, so it, the new vertex, has T neighbors in F. Uh, it. Maybe I'll say if V delete H is some vertex, you know, U and U has T neighbors in, in F. Uh, then uh, X E of G star is one plus or minus uh, six T C g star to the t times n um, if if t is less than 16 because I, I assumed 16 typicality but it doesn't really matter um, okay uh, so now iterating uh, uh, in general uh, we have this exp expression so that x e of g star is 1 plus or minus, let's say, 7 times the number of h's, number of edges times c, uh, uh, times uh, density to the number of new edges, uh, n to the number of new vertices. Okay. So that's what you get just by multiplying this, applying this formula repeatedly. Um, all right. What, what, so one more comment about these these general extensions. So uh, so this this will be 
um, when I'm choosing something, this will tell me how many choices I have it, um, if I, without worrying about avoiding previous ones. Um, how many w will be excluded? So suppose I'm trying to avoid some bounded subgraph. Um, so suppose uh, so we want uh, phi star of h uh, to avoid some uh, uh, c prime bounded uh, J doesn't matter what it's called. Okay, so how how many choices do I do I exclude? Um, well, I can sum over uh, all edges uh, of H. That uh, so I'm trying to avoid it among the new edges. I mean, if if it's if it's in what I've already got, there's no no chance. But um, I can sum over so each over all possible edges that this is the one which is going to be play the role in in J, and then building up vertex by vertex, at the point when I add that vertex, I can just crudely estimate it by uh, C prime times N. So, so, cr uh, so crudely, uh, the number of forbidden is less than C prime times N to the, well, C uh, size of H times C prime times N to the pH. And uh, this will be less than half the total if h is small. Because uh, here I've got some, uh, some power of the density, and here I've got some constants, and if c prime is some, uh, so, so very roughly this is c, which is much smaller than, than d, d, d star, then this, this will hold. Okay. Um, all right, so this was all kind of setting us up for later things. So now uh, we'll put that aside and think about where we're up, up to in the strategy. So uh, we applied this random greedy algorithm. Um, we've got the, uh, we, we've covered L, we've got the spill S. So the next step was to the whole. So we want um, SETs uh, MO and MI in G star such that the uh, union of MI and S partitions <coughs> the union of M0. So in other words, uh, we look at the graph uh, which is formed by the union of these triangles in, M, in MO. Uh, that contains S. Uh, we take out S, and what remains has a triangle decomposition, which we call MI. Okay. okay. Um, so this is, uh, this is where we're going to go back to this, uh, uh, the results on integral decompositions that I mentioned in, in the, uh, my first lecture. So they are... Yes, and, and Wilson, yeah. Um, so... So how, do, how might we think of this? So we could think of this as, well, S is the difference between um, MO and MI. So we can so we think of, uh, uh, so let's say phi, which is um, MO minus MI uh, as a uh, minus one, zero, one vector indexed by triangles. Um, which solves the equation phi times the uh, inclusion matrix is equal to S. So, uh, so the triangle edge inclusion matrix. Um, now, uh, I've, I've slipped into using some notation, uh, which is to identify sets with, with their characteristic vectors. Notation. So, uh, 
uh, so, so for a set X, so, um, so subsets uh, correspond to vectors 0, 1 to the X. You're very familiar with this. Uh, so uh, multisets, which I'll also need, correspond with n to the x. So where I include 0 and n. Um, and I'm also going to be extending this because I'm going to be dealing with integer vectors. And I want to think of these as a kind of multiset where, with, uh, where elements have signs attached. So say int sets. So, um, so these are uh, so multisets of signed elements. Just means it's a multiset where uh, each element has a sign attached to it. So while I'm talking about this notation, let me think about what else I need. I'm going to be writing, so if, if V is in Z to the X, we write uh, V is uh, V plus minus V minus, where so V plus of X is the maximum of uh, Vx and Vz. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. So uh, that's that's okay. I think it's. Have I, I think I specified it. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. So I, I I take this interpretation. So it's a uh, uh, is it clear? What, uh, yeah. uh, okay. Uh, what else am I going to do? Uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to form uh, neighborhoods of multi sets and in sets in a similar way to I form neighborhoods of graphs. So if um, if V is in if H is a graph a graph. Um, and J is in, let's say, I think it's multiset in, in H, uh, right? Uh, J, V, uh, so, so we define J, V, which is in uh, N to the V, H, uh, by J, V of U is J of U, V. Okay, so just extending the... the Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, what do I want to do? So, um, so I'm going to be. Uh, so, my first step in uh, in constructing this, I'm, I'm looking for a, a solution of this equation uh, with uh, uh, using coefficients minus one, zero, and one. First step will just be to find an integral solution. Now, I mentioned this already as was done by. Uh, Graver and Jurgat and Wilson, but uh, what I need to I need to maintain this boundedness condition. Um, and if you you look at, that, at their proof, it's very much uh, non-bounded. It focuses everything on a very small uh, number of vertices, and then finishes it off there by by um, because. Okay, so so what are we going to do? Um, okay, so uh, all right, let's let's take a lemma and then prove it. Uh, Oh, one, one more piece of notation. Instead of working with inclusion matrices, it would be more convenient to work with the uh, associated linear maps. So Natty mentioned these in his lecture, these uh, boundary operators. Well, these, these are not really boundary operators because they have no signs, but it doesn't matter. Um, OK, so, so, so let uh, uh, delta i uh, be the linear map. Uh, uh, for 
inclusion matrix uh, respect to I set and whatever else and the input. So I won't write a formal definition. I'll just give you an example. If I apply delta 2 to uh, a triangle x, y, z, then it outputs x, y plus y, z plus z, x. Uh, if I apply delta 1 to x, y, z, it outputs x plus y plus z. So these, and these, I should, maybe I should be a bit careful here. So uh, these are, these are multi, these are, these are as combinations of, of sets. So uh, that, 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 that so combinations of sets, sub, subsets of pairs or vectors in, in, uh, indexed by pairs where I have a one here, a one here, and a one here. So, uh, and our lemma, uh, um, there exists uh, some, ah, so I'm, so I'm now going to start, I'm going to do something a bit strange, which is I'm going to start using edges which are not uh, in my graph. Uh, they're, not, they're not in G star, they're not even in G, they're just in the complete graph. Um, and then, I'm, then I'll, uh, I'll fix that later. Um, so I'm going to say there exists some phi which is in z to the k, k3 of k, kn. So these are triangles in the complete graph. Uh, such that, uh, so the, uh, satisfies the, uh, the equation which we're, we're looking for, which uh, I've rubbed out. It's, uh, uh, this, uh, this, this delta 2 is now playing the role of multiplying by the inclusion matrix. Um, and delta 2 of phi plus is, uh, let's say, I think, 100 C2 bounded. Okay, so uh, I uh, so I, I've 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 got a solution, but I didn't use uh, very many edges at any vertex. Okay, so what's the idea? So I'm going to do this in, in stages, where I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to uh, sorry. Okay. So write it. So idea. So I'm going to write. So phi is phi zero plus phi one plus phi two. Uh, we're going to have uh, j zero is equal to uh, what we get by just removing. I'm, going to, I'm trying to reduce uh, s to zero by taking off uh, boundaries of triangles. So uh, first of all, I'll take off phi 0, then I'll have j1, right? I take off phi 1. I'll have j2, where I take off phi 2. And I'm getting bet better properties at each time. Uh, I want uh, delta i of ji equal to 0. Okay. So what does this say? So the, uh, for J0, this is saying that the sum of sum of the vector, we have a vector on edges. So th here we're just saying the sum, sum of the vector is equal to 0. Then here we're having the stronger property that the sum at every vertex is equal to 0. And then finally, the sum at every edge, i.e. the edge itself is 0. So, um, so i.e. So, so, so J2. So in particular, J2 is 0. So uh, that's, that tells me that uh, phi has the property that I want, that delta 2 of phi is equal to it. OK. Um, I should say that the proof I'm going to use here is, is very special for uh, triangle decomposition. So it uh, doesn't generalize to hypergraphs.
Okay, so um, so step zero um, is is easy. We just we just have to get the sum of, of the vector to equal to zero be equal to zero. So we just choose s over three triangles uniformly at random. So so pi zero is size of s over three triangles in Kn uniformly at random independent. Um, now I forgot to mention that uh, that S is uh, tri-divisible. Uh, so, uh, so. Uh, because I, I can write it as, uh, so what, what was the picture here? I, uh, I had this, uh, At this picture of a template, template the uh, the nibble, the leave, and s, and this was M C. So I could I could write s is equal to uh, the union of n plus the union of t plus the union of M C minus g, right? I, uh, uh, so I've expressed it as an integer linear combination of things that are tridivisible. So it is tridivisible. So in particular. Uh, the uh, size of S is divisible by 3, so it makes sense to take S over 3 triangles. All right. Um, so I need to say something about the boundedness condition. Well, this is easy if I take uniformly random triangles. So, um, uh, so, so by Chernoff bounds, uh, with high probability, uh, so the graph formed by these triangles is, let's say, 1.1 uh, C2 bounded. Just a a bit more than what I, I started with. Um, okay. Uh, what about what do we what are we going to do for J one? So now, uh, so step one. Uh, so now we we have the condition that uh, so we have uh, so delta. Delta one of J one is delta zero of J zero. Okay. Um, so now let's cons uh, let's uh, let's project uh, J zero down onto vertices. So we, we're, we're trying to uh, uh, we're trying to now fix the sum we, when we look at. Uh, so let's okay. Let's let uh, so J star be delta one of J zero. So this. Uh, so now we just this is some uh, uh, this is some vector which assigns uh, integers to the vertices. Uh, so, uh, some are some are positive, some are negative. The sum is zero. Um, let's start. Uh, by this. So, so now I want to, to do some, some transfers. I want to uh, 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 to move uh, weight from one between vertices. And here a key property is that uh, all of these uh, entries are even. Uh, so by tri-divisibility. So, um, all of the vectors which I'm working with are going to satisfy uh, the divisibility conditions. The sum of the entries is divisible by three, and the sum at every vertex is even. Because I'm, I'm always uh, adding triangles, so which satisfy these conditions. So we need a, a little gadget for moving two units from one vertex to another. It's very easy to write down. So uh, gadget. 
is a so this uh, this uh, so moves two from x to y and uh, no effect on other vertices. Okay, so uh, so what do we do? We uh, we just uh, we go along. So we uh, we we pair up the uh, the values arbitrarily. So we we have we we have the positive ones and the negative ones, and they they uh, have equal sum when we take out the sign from the negative ones. And we just pair them up. Uh, so so pair up uh, positive and negatives. Say, uh, uh, say x1 plus uh, x1 minus up to the x uh, t plus x t minus. So these are uh, so vertices with uh, so with multiplicity. And so we, this is we just. Uh, we've taken these vectors and thinking of them, uh, think of them as multisets, and then we just partitioned that multiset into pairs. So each pairing positives and negatives, um, and then we just apply for each pair. We, we apply one of these gadgets where the other two vertices are chosen uniformly at random. Uniformly random independent. Okay, so now it's again, it's going to be an easy calculation to see that. Uh, okay, so this uh, we put all of these together and call that. Um, so so let by uh, one p. Uh, So this this gives us phi one, which is a, a, a vector of triangles, uh, and and what do we want to say? We just want to say, well, what is the probability that I we want a good bound on the probability that we cover any edge, and then uh, that will be enough to say that uh, uh, by turn off bounds we ch don't choose many edges at any vertex with high probability. So, uh, so for boundedness, uh, so, so it suffices to estimate probability recovery for, for e. So, so I fix some e, and then there are there are various ways it can be covered depending on the role it's going to play in this configuration. So, uh, so, so for e. Incident two xi plus or xi minus. Uh, so, uh, how many choices are there? So, uh, so the so the so the number of okay. So, first of all, the uh, the pro what's the probability? It's uh, it's essentially one over n. It's, well, it's two over n. So, so the probability. Uh, uh, so gadget i. It's about uh, two over n, uh, and how many uh, ch how many choices am I 
uh, thinking about, well, um, the edges I covered so far. So there were some edges from phi, I managed to see to any of them. Uh, and then there were some edges from, uh, from phi zero, at most uh, 1. What did I say? 1.1 C2, n of them. So, uh, so the number of, and then there are two n points of E. So, uh, but also these, uh, there's a divided by two because each, yeah, I'm covering two each time. So uh, it doesn't really matter what the constants are, of course. But um, so the number of contributions, number of such p less than, what should we say? Uh, Uh, maybe let's say let's say three. I think or I don't know if it's three or four. It doesn't it doesn't not really important. Um, so uh, what else? Uh, we've got uh, this row, this one here. Okay, so so for, for other e, uh, the prob probability cover e by gadget i looks like uh, <coughs> one over n choose two. Uh, so uh, and the number of these e's is uh, like c two two c two n choose two. Uh, so, so let's say, so with high probability, let's say, uh, I don't know, I, rem I seem to remember um, that it was, it came out as being 8 bounded, so 8 C2 bounded. Uh, so what, where did 8 come from? Uh, 3, 2.1 is 5, 5, uh, maybe 8 was a bit, a bit of an overestimate, but let's, let's say, uh, Let's say both of these are uh, eight C two bounded. Just to be safe, I, maybe eight can be improved, but I don't really care about the numbers. And we we have the the property which so which we wanted for J one. So now. Uh, uh, In step two, we're starting with some so J1, which is uh, J0 minus I1, uh, sat which satisfies uh, J1. Sums, sums to zero to, at every vertex. Yeah. Okay, so now, now I'm going to make an argument which is really very uh, specific to graphs. I'm going to decompose it as a sum of uh, cycles where I alternate plus one, minus one. So, uh, so let's write uh, J as a sum of sine uh, cycles. So, so how how so J one? So how do we do this? You you take a vertex, you follow some edge which is plus, which has a plus. You follow some edge which has a minus. Follow some edge which has a plus, a minus, a plus. Maybe you come back to your, to your start. Maybe I'm, maybe I come back to my start with a uh, with a with a minus, in which case I have a cycle. Or uh, maybe I do something like uh, this. Okay, so it's a uh, just an annoying complication, but it's a. Um, and, and I'll do this in such a way that there's no cancellation. Uh, between cycles. Right, so I, I find such a cycle, I, I, I 
delete it from the from the int set, which, or I, in other words, I I add its characteristic vector to the uh, to the, the current vector, and then I've reduced the uh, the, the, uh, the sum of absolute values. I keep going until I reduce it to zero. All right. Um, now I want to break each of these cycles up into four cycles. these into things like this. So uh, it's easy to see how to do that if they, if they don't cross over. So, uh, so uh, colors would be uh, helpful. Though. You probably see it without colors, but anyway, find a color. There's one, and then there's another one, another one. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> Try again. Right, so plus, minus, plus. Minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, minus, plus, minus, plus. Okay, so, uh, uh, and then, so what do I do if I have a, if I have a crossing? Uh, to fiddle out about it, but maybe it's a bit dangerous to even attempt it. Uh, probably is a bit dangerous. Yeah. What's it? What? Uh, okay. So yeah, so you, you can see I can't even do the easy. You can see I can't even do the easy case. So it's a. Okay. Right. Good. Good. So I won't. I. Won't, you can do. There's something you can do when they cross over, but I won't even attempt to do it on the board because I'll. will be even worse than that. Exactly. So you c you can do something with 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 things like this. Uh, there's a there's a way of using this this edge here, and, uh, but uh, I'm not going to try and draw it because I couldn't even draw this one. Okay. Um, all right. So now, uh, what am I going to do with these? So uh, so. Right, but but there's another important thing, which is that I didn't I didn't increase the degree of of any vertex. I most doubled, or in fact tripled, the degree of any vertex. Tripling because of funny things that go on here. Um, so uh, so so the number of covered edges at any b at most triples. Um, okay, um, now what's the point of four cycles? There's, these are easy to uh, decompose into sine triangles. So uh, hopefully I'll manage this. Yes. Okay, so uh, if I apply delta 2 to this, I get Okay, so so I, again, uh, just for each of these sine cycles, just choose its its, its vertex here randomly. Uh, apply apply your bounds, and I won't go through the details. It's just like the the, the previous ones. You, we end up with a, a triangle decomposition, uh, sine triangle decomposition, and I, if I did the calculations correctly, it's 100 C2 bounded. Uh, random. So, 
in high probability we're done. Right. So, so where did we get to now? We've got this. We've got this uh, vector which is indexed by triangles, which is uh, uh, nothing to do with the graph. Uh, uh, the triangles have nothing to do with the graph, but the, uh, when I apply delta two, to, I get the thing which I'm looking for, which is this fill. Uh, now I want to uh, replace these triangles by some other set of triangles which belong to the, the graph G star. So, so now we want to replace triangles in phi uh, by triangles G star uh, such that every edge is used. Uh, and most once uh, time with each sign. So, uh, so how, how do we replace triangles? So uh, we want uh, we want a graph with two different triangle decompositions, or a, a vector of triangles with, which satisfies delta 2 is equal to 0. So convenient choice is, is the octahedron. So. so uh, a bit hard to... to <laughs> even when that's visible. Yeah, so... Bit hard to draw because you can't see whether the, which face the signs are up. But uh, anyway, so uh, another way to, to draw it would be as complete uh, tripartite graph. Um, so uh, can we take two? Uh, and we'll sign uh, attach signs to the triangles in such a way that every edge is in. Uh, so so signs such that every edge. In one plus and one minus. Okay, so. So for those who don't do this uh, for breakfast, it's a <coughs> very easy to draw. It's this graph, that's one thing you can do with your fingers, and it's planar and it's a uh, two phase coloring. Oh, yeah. The coloring is just this plus and minus. True, yeah. If I drew it in a planar fashion, it would be easier to see. Yeah. Okay, so this gives me a method to uh, replace a triangle that I don't want. Right? I, I find some, some octahedron using <coughs> that triangle, uh, and I uh, replace it by the other seven triangles of the octahedron. So, so I can so replace... Replace, okay, I should say delta 2 of this is equal to 0. So we can, so we can replace uh, one triangle by seven others in an octahedron. Uh, maybe more importantly, I can replace two triangles which use some particular edge with opposite sign. Uh, Uh, by six others in an octahedron. Uh, so not using E. Right. So uh, when I when I whenever I've used an edge that I'm not allowed to use, uh, I can I can take a positive a positive positive use of it, a negative use of it. Find some octahedron where all of the other edges belong to G star, the graph, the edges that I'm allowed to use, and use those ones instead. Okay, uh, I can't do this straight away because uh, uh, I may use more than one edge that I'm not allowed to use in a given triangle. So, 
so the so I'll have a two-phase algorithm. The first phase will be just to replace all the triangles I used before by some other triangles, such that each triangle uses at the most one bad edge. Say so, a uh, oxyhedral elimination algorithm. So phase one, replace all sine elements f of phi by uh, the other seven triangles, by the other seven sine triangles of some octahedron, say so omega f containing f. Um, how, am I going to do, how am I going to do this uh, uh, such that all other edges are in G star? And each one is going to be choose. It's a random greedy algorithm. Each one is uniformly at random, subject to avoiding previously covered edges. So a random greedy. Uh, each is uniformly at random subject to avoiding previous. Okay. So, uh, okay, so supposing this doesn't, uh, uh, this doesn't abort, uh, we get some, some new set of triangles. Uh, if this doesn't abort, could it might theor theoretically abort because there are no choices in the octahedron, but with, with high probability this is not going to happen. Uh, if this doesn't abort, we, we produce some phi primes with uh, still satisfies delta 2 phi primes is equal to uh, S. Uh, and what else am I going to want? So I'm going to want some, some boundedness condition on it, but uh, let's not let's not save that for the analysis of the algorithm. Um, and there is some graph uh, we can write uh, delta 2 of 5 primes plus, so the uh, uh, is equal to S union sum uh, gamma, so the, the graph of new edges. For every, every new edge I cover it at most, uh, every new edge is covered once by a plus triangle and once by a, a negative triangle. Okay. Uh, so phase two, uh, we're going to do the same thing using this, this replacement. So uh, well, what else do I want to say about this? Um, every triangle uh, uh, of five primes has at most one bad edge. So uh, this is uh, so this this is an edge which is uh, uh, coming from uh, well just so th I uh, this is this is precisely delta two of phi minus. These are the bad edges uh, with multiplicity. So phase phase two is uh, like that. Uh, so we form a sequence so S of uh, pairs F, F primed, uh, each using some E, which is in uh, delta two phi minus with opposite sign. Uh, I mean, I mean to say take a sequence like this so that uh, these are precisely the triangles which we want to eliminate so that we're no longer using any edges in I2 minus. 
and and then same algorithm as, as here. So uh, replace all by six others in an oxyhedron omega f primed uniformly at random such such that uh, avoid previous. Uh, okay, so that's the algorithm which we're going to apply. Uh, so just have to um, prove that it, it works. So it so so it certainly it, it produces something which still has. Um, so so we let uh, uh, maybe let's psi the result. So we have uh, delta two of psi is equal to uh, s. Didn't change and. Uh, Uh, delta two of psi plus is a uh, uh, S union uh, gamma union and some gamma prime where these are the new edges in phase two. And again, each one is used once with positive sign and once with negative sign. So, so then, so then. Uh, M zero is equal to psi plus, and M i is equal to psi minus. Uh, so that's uh, that's what we want. So, so uh, we expressed S as a, um, S is equal to a uh, so we've got what we want. It just uh, remains to prove that uh, the algorithm doesn't support and with high, prob with high probability, and it produces something that which is still reasonably bounded. The high probability algorithm does not support, and let's say. Uh, Union of M zero is uh, C three bounded, which was the uh, C three is some other constant I used in the statement of whole. Um, okay, so I won't have time to to get the proof in detail, but it's uh, you can maybe believe it's quite similar to the uh, the random greedy algorithm I showed you earlier for uh, for, for covering. So let's uh, just mention a few of the steps along the way. So. Uh, Sketch proof. Um, so, so we uh, so we copy the an method, the, the RGA method of uh, cover. So, um, so what do we have to do? So, first of all, we want to know at each step how many choices there are. So, so let's look at phase one. So. At each step, uh, so number of step, uh, so f, which is uh, in phi, so uh, so the number of valid omega f, without worrying about whether they're disjoint from the previous ones, is just given by this extension counting formula, which I I wrote up earlier. Right? There are uh, there are three new vertices and nine new edges, so it's uh, so one plus or minus sixty C Okay. Um, now how many are forbidden at any given step? So assume, um, assuming uh, gamma is, uh, say, C2 prime bounded, C2 prime will be something a bit bigger than C2. Uh, it's a number of forbidden 
less than uh, c2 uh, nine c2 e prime n cubed, which will be less than half the total. So we're okay. We're in good shape for the uh, the method of comparing this choice just with a uniformly random choice. Um, what do we get if they were chosen uniformly at random? So um, if we chose uh, the omega s independently, uh, rule e, so the uh, so the expected number of times cover e, what do we get? This is, uh, this is what we called E sub E. So there are, there are two cases to consider according to whether E intersects the triangle, uh, which we're, uh, according to whether E intersects F, the, uh, the triangle which we're replacing. So, uh, so, so case one, uh, looks like this. Um, so, uh, so the probability that we uh, probability recovery, uh, so omega f is containing omega f delete f uh, uh, is uh, less than well, just crudely estimate that there are um, that we have to, we have to choose two more vertices. Uh, n squared choices, uh, and we know how many choices there are at each step. So, uh, about density to the nine times n cubed. Okay, um, and how many contributions do we get? Well, um, remember the boundedness. We've uh, 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 we have th uh, this set of triangles, which is 100 C2N. Their, their underlying graph is 100 C2N bounded. So the um, number of choices of F is less than, uh, you know, maybe 400 C2N squared so, uh, N. Right, so uh, some choice of endpoints, choice of which, how to own things. Maybe, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so what is this? So contribution to E sub E, I multiply these two things together, um, what do I get? Something which is essentially, may you say, may you say it's 401 uh, C2, EG star to the minus nine. Hmm? So the ends will cancel. Um, uh, just uh, I changed. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. I changed four hundred to four hundred and one just because there's you know some approximations. But yeah. And similarly for the uh, for the other one, right? It's, let's let's just we're not going to get onto phase two, but it'd be similar to phase one. Uh, let's just finish phase one. So, so case two. Here's F. Here's E. So now the probability E is contained in omega F is less than N over this thing. And the number of choices for uh, just just the total, so size of uh, uh, less than a hundred C two n squared. Uh, so contributes less than a. 101 C2 
VG star minus 9. Okay, so uh, I'm going through, through this quickly because I don't have time and also because it's very similar to the, the argument I showed you earlier. So, so we've got an estimate for EE and as by the same kind of argument as I made earlier, this implies that with high probability we have this boundedness condition for gamma which we assumed at the start if we take C2 to be something like, I don't know, 1,000 C2 dg star to the minus 9. So, so that works with high probability. That was phase 1. Phase 2 is very similar, just with a different configuration. And at the end, we have the conclusion we, which we wanted in whole. So we've expressed S as the difference of triangles belonging to the template. So uh, one more lecture to go. I'll explain the, the final step, which is which I call completion. So how these triangles can be re rearranged in such a way that the uh, this outer set of triangles is actually formed by triangles in the template. Thank you.